The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this distance learning session with me, Charles Anwar Kakebu, your history teacher. I will be taking you for history in the upper six class. Before we continue with our lesson for today, it's important for us to look at uh, the homework we had in our last class. It was to trace the origins of the UPC political party in French Cameroon. Trace the origins of the UPC political party in French Cameroon. This is the homework you had in order to prepare for this lesson. Of for this lesson. In the guise of responses. Uh, the Brazzaville Conference authorized the creation of political parties. Yes, a good response. The Brazzaville Conference made it possible that political parties and other associations could be created in French Cameroon. And so the UPC was one of those parties that was born in 1948 and it was the first indigenous political party. Indigenous meaning that it was formed by purely Cameroonians. In the course of the lesson, we are going to look at this. The UPC was founded on the 10th of April, 1948. Yes, this is the day that the statute of the UPC political party was deposited at, uh, in Douala after the famous meeting at, uh, or we call it, the Dous Shesira, who met in the party in Douala. Dous Shesira met in the party in Douala. Yes, that was the response. So the Secretary General of the UPC political party was uh, Yonan Bouli, on for the creation of the political part of UBC, Leonard Bully was Secretary General and he was the one who deposited the status of uh, the UBC political party in Duala. In, the, in Duala. Good response. Yes, good. The founders of the UBC political party included Jacques Ngem, Charles Asale, Guillaume Hon. Joseph Raymond Etoudi, Leonard Bouli, Emmanuel Ya, Jacques René Dibou, H.R. Malo, Leopold Moumi Etia, George Yemi, Theodore Mosso, Guillaume Baga. These are the 12, you see here, those Sheikh Sira. These are the 12 Cameroonians who met in a bar in Douala called Sira in the party, and that is what we talk of, Dous Chesira, and on the 10th of April 1948, they came up with the status of the UBC political party. That's very good, very good. Equally, we have the structure of the UBC political party. It was the first indigenous political party in Cameroon. Yes, we saw it was all the party, the founding fathers were all French Cameroonians. True, good. It had a party congress. It also had a Politburo, a secretariat, a treasury, a women's wing, and other organs and institutions like newspapers, amongst others. Still in line with the response of our homework, the objectives of the past, we are tracing the origin and therefore also looking at how it was organized. Okay? Objectives of the UBC party. To begin with, the objectives include the immediate independence and reunification of French Cameroon. 
to unite any groups against colonialism, good. The elimination of harsh French policies, that was good. The fight against economic exploitation of the territory, these were the objectives of the UPC political party. In your own work, you went to trace the origin but we've been able to look at the origin from the Brotherhood Conference, which gave, uh, created a platform, a safe space for political expression, expression and representation and freedom of association. Top in French Cameroon, we saw the birth of UPC, political party, as a result of exploitation of the French colonial administration, violation of the rights of the French Cameroonians, poor working conditions, uh, the failure to respect the trusteeship agreement in French Cameroon. These were the things that pushed the founding fathers to set up the UPC political party. And we also seen the origin of this party. This takes us into our C plus, the upper C plus, which focuses on the UPC revolts. The UPC revolt in French Cameroon. Needless to say that the UPC stands for the Union the, the, the Population du Cameroon, the UPC political pass. To present this lesson, we are going to begin with our learning objectives, previous knowledge, the situation in real life, learning activities, some application exercises, and you will have another homework to prepare you for the next lesson. The objectives of this lesson are to analyze the causes of the UBC revolt that broke out in 1955. To analyze the causes of the UBC revolt that broke out in 1955. To examine the impact of this revolt in French Cameroon. To examine the impact of this revolt in French Cameroon. As we continue, as we proceed with our lesson, it is important to consider or to really have to remember recall that you have already studied the Brazzaville Conference and the recommendations from this conference. This foreknowledge, this previous knowledge, empowers you to effectively grasp the skills and competencies and knowledge that this person will be bringing up subsequently. Let us consider this situation in real life. Harsh despite measures implemented in the school milieu of students results to violent demonstrations by students. Harsh despite measures. Remember, in schools, the word Kobe still exists, which means punishment. In the French language, Kobe is real of Kobe, which means punishment. Kobe, which is a hangover from the French colonial system of assimilation. Which we are told a recommendation in the Brotherhood Conference abolish convey engineer prestation. But within our school lexicon, especially in the French language, the word convey still exists. Consider the situation that the harsh disciplinary measures implemented within the school milieu to students, call it convey, resulted, results to violent demonstrations from students. As a student leader, what will you do to peacefully resolve these conflicts? Remember, our focus is nation building. And we realize that within the school milieu, it is a center of national cohesion, of national integration, for building a united Cameroon. And yet, we have hard study measures which cause students to demonstrate is this a good aspect of nation building? Therefore, as a student leader, what measures, what approaches will you adopt to peacefully resolve these conflicts, which are a threat to living together, national cohesion within the school milieu?
through this nursing, you will mobilize resources that will instill in you the confidence and the knowledge to be able to sensitize students in your school on the importance of peace in the process of nation building, in living together, in national integration. Thus, the resources you mobilize to this person will enable you to, to sensitize the, uh, the other students in your school on the importance of peace in nation building. Let us proceed with this learning activity. We have a document on and uh, observe the document for one minute, after which we'll answer some questions. Identify two things that caught your attention from the document and explain why. In other words, which two things moved you, caught your, your, your attention? Which two things inspire you from the documents and explain why? These are our documents. Which two things? Yes, the crab and the inscription Cameroon Libre. The crab, okay, and the inscription Cameroon Libre. Ah, yes, I can see. That is what has caught your attention. Good. So how do you explain that? Okay. The crab, which is one of the emblems of the UBC political party, yes, stands for resilience, unwillingness to give up. Resilience, unwillingness to give up. Good. That is, the UBC political party was resilient to all the difficult conditions that surrounded them and decided to fight for independence of French Cameroon, racist and unwillingness to give up in the struggle to liberate French Cameroon from French colonial rule. Good. And then we have the inscription Cameroon Libre. Yes, independence for French Cameroon. Libre, free, a free French Cameroon. Thus, the UBC Polisar Party was bent on fighting even to the shed, to shed their own blood for a free and independent Cameroon. Perhaps that is why we have a red color which represents the logo of the UBC political party. Remember, this was the first indigenous political party. And we saw in our previous lesson that despite the brand of friends, the French campus were not given the latitude to or not create a safe space, a safe platform where they could express their grievances. Most of the political parties and trade unions were branches of French political parties and trade unions. Therefore, from the UNCC, which most of the founding fathers of the U, uh, uh, UBC belong, and to the UBC political party, it was a safe platform where the French Cameroonians could, ex could express their grievances and advocate for a free and independent Cameroon. Our next activity requires us to analyze the causes of the UBC revolts that broke out in 1955. To analyze the causes of the UBC revolt that broke out in 1955. To begin with, the UBC calls for immediate independence and reunification, even with their several visits to the United Nations General Assembly were not yet Between 1952 to 1955, 
Um Nyobe, the then Secretary General of the UPC after its creation. It should be noted that Um Nyobe was not a founding father of the UPC, but became a charismatic leader of the UPC after its creation. Small wonder, most often you will hear of Um Nyobe and the UPC, but most of the founding fathers were not as charismatic as Um Nyobe, so much that he became an emblematic leader of the UPC. His address to the United Nations General Assembly on the non respect of the statutory conditions of the trusteeship agreement and the rejection by the French colonial administration of the UPC call for independence of French Cameroon on December 1st, 1955. Annoyed the UPC and made them to adopt different measures to express their views. Furthermore, the refusal to administer French Cameroon as a mandated and later trust territory. For example, most French, French Cameroonians were getting French citizenship when they were able to gain Cameroon citizenship. Alexander Mandel. Was a deputy in the French National Assembly. When were they going to have a Cameroon National Assembly with Cameroonians as deputies in the Cameroon National Assembly? So this refusal pushed the UPC to adopt violent measures in requesting for independence in French Cameroon. In addition, the hostilities of the colonial administration towards the UPC political parts. The colonial administration spied on members of the UPC parts. For example, in 1953, while Omyobe was briefing his party mates on his previous visit to the United Nations, they had a visit from the colonial administration. In 1952, elections into the Territorial Assembly of Cameroon did not go down well with the UPC, who accused the colonial administration of rigging the elections even within their own strongholds, to the point where the Bloc Democratic Cameroonais, which was an administrative, a colonial administrative political party, held by Louis Paul Ojula, he himself a French took precedence over the UPC. The British transfers by Roland Gray in 1954 of members of the UPC political party. And even the manipulation of some traditional elites within the grass field and the western regions of Cameroon, the Bambuki area, so much that in 1955, during a visit to this area, Umyobe was not well received and was harassed by the traditional rulers. These hostilities from the colonial administration, induced by the colonial administration, greatly annoyed the UPC leaders, pushing them to resort to violent measures in the struggle to present their case for independence. That not be said, external factors equally contributed to what the UPC crisis. For example, the writings of Ho Chi Minh of Vietnam influenced the UPC. The activities of Gamel Abdel Nasser of Egypt, the man who nationalized the Suez Canal right in front of the French and the British. The French humiliation in the Battle of Dien Bien Phu by the Chinese. These activities coupled with the UPC continuous link with these political leaders in other parts of the world influence them to adopt to adopt some of the measures, the violent measures used by these other leaders to achieve independence in their own countries. In addition, the hostilities were not only coming from the colonial administration, but equally from the Roman Catholic Church. A case in point was the April 1955 Easter Pastoral Letter. 
The Roman Catholic bishops in Cameroon, in French Cameroon, gang of the colonial administration. And even in the churches, from the pulpit, call on the French Cameroonians not to listen to the UC political party. Warn them against the intention of the party, which will basically work in immediate independence and unification. Better working conditions, respect the rights of the French Cameroonians. These greatly agreed the UPC political party and his leadership who decided to resort to violent measures, to resort to revolt as a means of expressing their views. Sometimes, some say, injustice pushes institutions to get violent. Perhaps this is what happened with the UPC political party. Because injustice under the colonial administration seems to have become a right. The UPC political party, through revolt, through violent actions, used resistance as a duty to protect the rights and duties of French Cameroonians and to fight for the independence of French Cameroon. The immediate cause of the revolt, of the UPC revolt, was the 100% increase in daily taxes collected for the use of market stores in the Yaoundé Central Market in May 1955. This was another gross exaggeration, another injustice, another rights violation, which immediately provoked the UPC political party to adopt Violent means, resistances, revolt as a means to put forth, put forth their cause for immediate independence and reunification for French Cameroon. With this at the background, it is important for us to examine the consequences, the impact of the UPC revolt in French Cameroon. All revolts come with negative and positive consequences. But however, we are most important in those changes that came in place as a result of the UPC revolt in French Cameroon. Remember, when injustice becomes a right, resistance becomes a duty. For a nationalist party, the UPC saw it the only option to present their case. To begin with, The outbreak of the UPC revolt in 1955 resulted to its immediate spread to other towns in French Cameroon, like Banga, Lum, Eseka, Edea, and other places in the Bambiki land and the Salaga Maritime. This resulted to human casualties. It is true, if we talk of human casualties, that about 26 people died and 200 wounded at the outbreak of the UPC crisis. However, a crisis which nationalists will, re will refer to as war of independence which took place in Cameroon between 1955 to 1971, it will be anathema to say only 26 persons died and 200 wounded. Whereas, there are several on toll and on enlisted issues of the UPC revolt, which in other words became known as a war of independence in French Cameroon. It also resulted in the banning of the UPC political party on the 13th of July 1955. With this, some UPC political party leaders were exiled. Some went to Guinea, Conakry, Ghana, Egypt, after a brief stay in British Southern Cameroon, because most of the British political party leaders escaped into British Southern Cameroon as a safe heaven. This, the revolt also brought about a split in the party. There was now a legal wing which was acting from within French Cameroon and more moderate, that is, the moderates under Theodore Mai Matip, which later on formed a coalition government in French Cameroon. 
and the exile queen under the leadership of Ruben Um Nyobe, who had become the Secretary General of the UPC political party. The UPC revolt increased violent conflicts and guerrilla activities in French Cameroon. This crisis only came to an end in 1971 after the execution of Ernest Wanji. Thus, between 1955 and 1971, there were violent conflicts, guerrilla attacks, guerrilla war warfare, or surprise attacks, vandalization of state properties like the Adkam building, the Douala around the railway line, amongst others. Furthermore, the UPC crisis or the UPC revolt in French Cameroon resulted to a decline in the popularity of the UPC political party in favor of the BDC or Bloc Democratic Cameroonese, which was a colonial administration political party. In the sense that what it was in favor of a colonial administration of the violation of the rights of the French Cameroonians instead. And because of this, the Commission of Inquiry from the United Nations in 1955 had more consultations with the Bloc Democratic Cameroonese, which was in favor of colonial administration. Furthermore, as a result of the UPC political crisis, Pierre Mesmer replaced Jean Ramadier in French Cameroon. In another perspective, the UPC crisis also resulted to a UN distinct mission, a commission of inquiry, which came to French Cameroon in 1955. As a result of the recommendations of this commission of inquiry, the Lua Cadre was passed, the framework law was passed in 1956. And this law, this law was how to enable the rapid transition of French Cameroon into independence. Most of the UPC political leaders moved to British Southern Cameroon and this resulted to the birth of the One Cameroon Party in British Southern Cameroon, which was the English version of the UPC in British Southern Cameroon. During this lesson, which aimed at analyzing the causes of the UPC revolts, we saw the parties, the failure of the parties request for immediate experience and verification, the parties' distrust for election results, economic hardship, and the increase in the daily tolls in market stores in Yaoundé. Also, we saw the impact of the revolt, the human and material losses, the banning of the UPC party, and the dispatch of a UN visiting mission to Cameroon, resulting to the passing of the Loa card. As a patriotic Cameroonian, therefore, with this knowledge of the UPC revolt in Cameroon, how would you refer to the UPC founding fathers and the political party? Were they nationalists of a nationalist political party? or terrorists? Explain your answer. Okay, you say nationalists. Okay, why? To begin with, because their cause was a just cause. They were fighting for the independence of French Cameroon. They wanted to liberate French Cameroon from French oppression. They were fighting to protect the rights of French Cameroonians. See, and that is why they were nationalists because they were fighting for the independence and education of French Cameroon. Independence was the right. And the Trust Agreement said the French Cameroonians had to be prepared for eventual independence. And they were fighting to advocate 
for the respect of the trustship agreement by the French colonial administration, which had integrated French Cameroon into the French Union, which was against the trusteeship agreement. Yes, good. This makes the UPCs nationalists, and this has been recognized by the state of Cameroon. However, in other domains, they are also called terrorists. How would you explain that? Like somebody said, one man's freedom fighter is another person's terrorist. Why they are seen as nationalists in Cameroon, some other person say they're terrorists. Why? Perhaps because of the approach they adopted, they vandalized, they vandalized public property, public buildings, railways. That's an act of terrorism. They also use fear as a means of achieving their objectives. These were some of the methods used by the UPC political party, although nationalists, which discredited them in the eyes of those who could respect them as nationalists. All in all, when we talk of nationalists in Cameroon who fought for the independence of Cameroon, we look at most often than not members of the founding fathers of the UPC political party, whom the state finally recognized as national heroes. For your homework, I would like you to investigate the circumstances that led to the rise of André Marie Bida as premier in French Cameroon in 1958. These are the various sources we consulted in the preparation of this lesson. It continues on the next slide. We had Cameroon History for Secondary Schools by Fanso, The Hundred Years of History by Victor Julius Ngo, History of Cameroon's History by Julius Victor Ngo, and a few other web sources we consulted. In the next lesson, we will be looking at the administration of André Marie Bida between 1957 and 1958. <laughs> Gani la kiri watere ndong Yeso kina bia jinkido Mane tambia ninya ne injo bia yen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tama tonge tam zabike Tam tam tama mote tam zabike Mane tambia ninya ne injo bia yen